the underground bases. Quote, we seem to be moving, drifting, steadily against our will, against the will of every race, every people, and every class towards some hideous catastrophe. Everyone wishes to stop it, but they don't know how. End quote. Winston Churchill. Starting in the early 1950s, an extensive network of underground bases was begun in the USA, costing untold trillions and comprising the largest construction project in human history. Yet few people know that these underground bases even exist. According to Anomalies Unlimited researchers, the following are a few of the better known underground U.S. bases, many of which were started as Continuity of Government, or COG, facilities, first built at the onset of the Cold War. A short list of the larger mega bases include Luke, Nevada, Roswell, New Mexico, Dayton, Ohio, Dulce, New Mexico, Nellis, Area 51 and S4 in Nevada, MJ-12 Meeting Center under the Greenbrier Hotel in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia, Mount Weather near Bluemont, Virginia, Mount Pony near Culpeper, Virginia, the View Tree Mountain facility in Virginia, and the Mazzano Mountain faculty with rail tunnels to Kirkland Air Force Base and Sandia National Labs in New Mexico. There are over a hundred other smaller underground facilities that cannot even be mentioned by name simply because they have no names, only nicknames and site numbers such as Raven Rock or Site R0001. And these are just in the United States. We will also examine underground military bases in other countries. This chapter will concern itself with secret military underground bases, but not before we examine other underground compounds throughout history. Belief in a subterranean world has been handed down as myth, tale, or rumor for generations. Some of these stories date back to ancient times and tell tales of fantastic flora and fauna that can be found in the caverns of ancient races. Socrates spoke of huge hollows within the earth which were inhabited by humans and vast caverns where rivers flowed. Medieval tradition features St. George, the slayer of a dragon, which originated from the underworld. The Hopi Indians believed they emerged from a world below the earth through a tunnel at the base of the San Francisco peaks near Flagstaff, Arizona. There are also legends about a mysterious city of Telos underneath Mount Shasta in Northern California. In Western China, in what is today Lower Mongolia and Tibet, is a vast system of caverns below the region of the Gobi Desert. The caves allegedly link the Agarthi system of Central Asia to a, quote, snake world. This multi-leveled cavern system under the southwestern slopes of the Himalayas is the mythical location where the Nagas dwell, according to Hindu legend. A serpent cult of human and reptilian collaborators has supposedly coexisted for centuries, and they occasionally make contact with the above world. One recent instance was contact with the Nazi Thule Society before and during World War II. The Bygong Pipes. Not only is there a mysterious pyramid atop Mount Bygong in western China, 
but also dozens of upright pipe-like features that can be seen protruding from various places in and around the mountain. The local legend claims the mountaintop is an alien UFO launch tower, and the pipes are air shafts to chambers below. Mount Baigong, about 40 kilometers southwest of the city of Dalinga in the western province of Qinghai, also contains iron debris and unusually shaped stones scattered around this desolate area. The artifacts in this area near the pyramid structure are known as the ET relics. The official travel description reads, quote, the pyramid has three caves with openings shaped like triangles on its facade and is filled with red-hued pipes leading into the mountain and a nearby saltwater lake, end quote, according to China's state-run Jinhao Agency. Two of the three caves at the foot of the mountain have collapsed and are inaccessible. The remaining middle one, which is the largest, stands with its floor about two meters above the ground and its top about three meters above the surface. Inside the cave, there is a half pipe about 40 centimeters in diameter, tilting from the top to the inside of the cave. Another pipe of the same diameter goes into the earth with only its top visible above the ground. Dozens of strange pipes surround the opening with diameters ranging from 10 to 40 centimeters. These structures indicate a highly advanced and completely unknown construction technique. On the beach at nearby Tosan Lake, which lies about 80 meters from the mouth of the largest cave, are many strangely shaped iron pipes which lie scattered amid the sands and rocks. They are orientated in an east-west direction with diameters from 2 to 4.5 centimeters. Further analysis of the pipes by a local smelter found that they consist of 30% ferric oxide, the type of iron used to make steel, large amounts of silicon dioxide, commonly found in quartz, and calcium oxide, the presence of which demonstrate that the pipes are very old. Even more bizarre is the discovery of pipes protruding within the lake itself. Some are reaching above the surface while others are buried below with similar shapes and thicknesses as those found on the beach. New Schwabenland, Antarctica. Before the onset of World War II, the Nazis began to set up a secret Antarctic research station called Base 211 in a region they named New Schwabenland, deep under the ice near the South Pole. This secret research facility was named New Berlin, truly a veritable city consisting of technicians, engineers, and scientists who conducted the most advanced Nazi research. When it was certain Germany was going to lose the war, the Nazis started moving their top secret operations dealing with atomic testing, advanced weapon development, and flying disks to New Berlin. Toward the conclusion of the war, the city was fully operational and allegedly continued to operate long after the war was over. These exotic Nazi aircraft and weapons were used in the decisive defeat of Admiral Byrd during his Operation High Jump expedition in 1946-47, including the sinking of the Navy destroyer Murdoch. This region of Antarctica, now called Queen Maud Land and administered by the Norwegians, contains a rift valley overflowing with geothermal activity, which was discovered by the Nazis in the late 1930s. Hot water ponds, named the Schumacher Ponds by the Germans, are teeming with algae, 
which is also found on surface rocks deep within Antarctica. These ponds never freeze over. Different species of algae reside in different ponds, giving each pond a different color. In the same way that the Icelanders rely on ge geothermal energy, the Nazis started to construct a sustainable base deep within the ice crevice near the ponds. Not much more is known about the Nazi base, except that in July and August of 1945, months after the German surrender, two U-boats arrived in Mar del Plata, Argentina. These were no ordinary submarines. They were from the so-called Fuhrer Convoy. Had they been to Antarctica to land Nazi treasure or high-ranking officials? Then in the southern summer of 1946-1947, the U.S. Navy appeared to invade Antarctica using a large naval force. The so-called scientific expedition, codenamed Operation High Jump, returned just two months into their six-month expedition. It is still classified as confidential. In 1958, three nuclear weapons were exploded in the region as part of another classified U.S. operation codenamed Argus. Was this the final end to the Nazi base in New Schwabenland? Now the Russians have a secret military base in another location closer to the center of Antarctica at Lake Vostok, a vast underground thermal lake covered by a glacial ice dome. It is said during the long days of the Antarctic summer, the ice dome emits enough sunlight to bathe the lake in an endless twilight glow. The warm waters of Lake Vostok flow under the ice into the ocean. Another nearby base is so secret that it is run by the National Security Agency and another by the CIA. This may be because the Nazis and Admiral Byrd found something astonishing there during their reconnaissance. There are rumors of a large UFO craft discovered in the ice and a huge magnetic anomaly on the southwest shore of Lake Vostok, which may be due to the presence of a vast amount of metal, possibly metal of a buried lost city. Author Henry Stevens, in his book, Hitler's Suppressed and Still Secret Weapons, Science and Technology, maintains that the evidence points to something artificial and, moreover, something under intelligent control. Could it be something very ancient but working in conjunction with the geophysical anomalous feature? There must be something very important down there for the NSA and the CIA to be secretly running the show under the Antarctic ice. A few years ago, two Australian women were attempting to cross-country ski over Antarctica when they were captured and detained by American Navy SEAL Special Forces. They were released and sent back home, but not allowed to complete their ex. Expedition. According to esoteric UFO studies, New Berlin was constructed by Nazi Ultra Forces allied to the reptilian Draco Empire. The early Nazis created treaties with the Draco Orion Forces. The U.S. government also fell into the alien treaty trap, which continues to this day. If the Fourth Reich of the Antarcticans were able to win control of the planet with the Dracos. They were promised 25% of the planet for their part in selling out the human race. The New World Order could only be implemented via a human and alien collaboration, namely the Fourth Reich of Bavaria. The Nazi Ultra forces could be one and the same as the Ultra programmable life forces 
in the Dulce, New Mexico facility, which also maintains a strong Barbarian connection. Modern underground bases. Is out of sight, out of mind? Are the happenings there unseen and unknown to the rest of the world? Underground bases controlled by the militaries of the world are a known fact today, as we'll see in a moment. But have they been around for eons, occupied by subterranean superhumans? General W. Stuart Stymington, appointed by President Truman to be the first Secretary of the Air Force in 1947, believed so. He had held positions as chairman of the Surplus Property Board in 1945 and Assistant Secretary of War for Air from 1946 to 1947. Symington once formally requested a report from military sources regarding the possible existence of subterranean superhumans. He may have been investigating the Nazis in Antarctica or something completely different. Since the 1950s, the U.S. government has been using nuclear-powered tunneling machines called nuclear subterranes, rhymes with submarines, which were designed at the Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico. The subterrane can melt through rock at an average eight kilometers per day, creating perfectly straight tunnels to be used for high-speed trains connecting several underground cities as it burrows through the rock hundreds of meters below the surface. Nuclear subterranes work by melting their way through the rock and soil, actually vitrifying it as they go, leaving no tailing mounds and producing a neat, solidly glass-lined tunnel behind them. The U.S. government, at the cost of trillions of dollars of undocumented taxpayer debt, is being funneled into the black projects, which has been used to pay for these underground bases. These vast underground facilities, some bigger than football stadiums and some buried a thousand meters below the surface, are fully stocked with food, artificial underground farms, redirected underground rivers, and thousands of kilometers of underground roads, large enough for two tractor trailers traveling in opposite directions to pass each other with room to spare. These faculties have vast underground mass transit systems connecting them to one another. The faculties are fully self-sufficient, generating their own electricity supply, their own food stocks, possessing air filtration systems, water purification systems, and vast supplies of guns and ammunition. The government refers to these facilities as deep underground military bases and structures, or the acronym DUMS. Wright-Patterson Air Force Base near Dayton, Ohio, is one of the original DUMS. This is where a multi-level underground facility houses a whole warehouse of alien hardware and cadavers taken from crash retrieval sites over the past decades. Another original dumb is an underground facility beneath Kirkland Air Force Base in New Mexico, codenamed Blue Moon by the National Security Agency. The entrance to the base is located in the Manzano Mountains. Blue is the code word meaning anything extraterrestrial. The original documents of the Griotta Treaty and the original ET materials from the early exchanges can be found today in the NSA facility called Blue Moon. Inside Blue Moon is the technological headquarters 
of the very secretive Department of Energy, the DOE at Blue Moon continues to build energy devices backward engineered from Ray and Draco reptilian technology for use in space or for use in the underground bases. The private firm Wackenhut is responsible for the security of most of the underground facilities in California, New Mexico, and Nevada, including the notorious Area 51. Wackenhut received multi million dollar contracts from the government to guard Cape Canaveral and the Nevada nuclear te bomb test site, the first of many extremely lucrative federal contracts that have sustained the company to this day. The Wackenhut Board of Directors includes former CIA, NSA, FBI, and Pentagon officials. Wackenhut has federal contracts to protect nuclear weapons facilities, nuclear reactors, the Alaskan oil pipeline, and more than a dozen American embassies abroad. Wackenhut has long standing ties to radical white wing organizations and is a private militia employing 30,000 men and women under arms. Peasmore, England. In Great Britain, the primary underground military compound is called the RAF Peasmore Base, located in the Berkshire countryside with access points at Harwell, Watchfield, and RAF Welford. There are at least six levels at Peasmore, the deepest level over a a kilometer below, all interconnected and accessed from different secret locations. It is in this deep underground location where gray aliens work with British intelligence to genetically engineer generated life forms. These drone-like entities are used in the MyLab abduction scenarios and in genetic technology exchanges. New gray test tube life forms are laboratory made in three stages. First, they are born in incubation units, kept in long racks as they developed and indirectly programmed while being grown to maturity. They are called programmed genetic life forms, that's PGLF. The British project name was Puppet Master, which became Mannequin. The UK, Canadian, and US governments oversee genetic engineering. The National Security Agency of the USA has been closely overseeing the manufacture of genetically engineered super beings in the UK underground bases. Others call these entities genetically engineered slaves to be used by NASA for deep space operations. There are many different PGLFs with different eye sizes, different statures, different numbers of fingers, and different degrees of programming. The greys continue their program of abducting and using unwilling human subjects to produce more PGLFs while the military cooperates because they want the technology. These reluctant collaborators actually seem to be stabbing each other in the back. The main whistleblower of the Peasmore underground base is named Barry King. He worked in the early 1970s until the late 1980s as a security officer with British Intel and had his own experience as a subject in a population control program experiment. He claims to have been chosen at an early age by secret surveys geared to genetic engineering and reports that he has two implants. He was experimented on in the trip seat and subjected to various procedures as part of human mind control tests planned 
for the ultimate subjugation of humankind. The trip seat connects to supercomputers. The subject wears a headband and interfaces with the computers. The goal is to make the subject susceptible to mind control. Graphic screens, electric brain link implants, and various programs can make the subject do different tasks. Due to his psi tech abilities, he was used in a variety of roles, many of which remain classified. Barry King first published his notes called The Voice in 1994. He claims most human abductions in North America and in the UK, even worldwide, are performed independently by the Greys, but some abductions are carried out by our own black operations with our own PGLFs, independent of the Greys. King says certain abductions in the UK are performed by the British military MyLabs for the purpose of genetic manipulation and the creation of a new human race with alien DNA similar to the gray clones. The military abductions of humans and subsequent crossbreeding with aliens in this underground laboratory below the Berkshire countryside mark the beginning of a new non-human race. In addition, the NSA and British intelligence also worked in the subsurface base, conducted abductions, and used human body parts for their own experiments using the technology of the greys. Much larger draconian reptilians were also present, and King said they seemed to be running the show. Pine Gap, Australia. Pine Gap is the commonly used name for a satellite tracking station located only 18 kilometers southwest of the town of Alice Springs in the center of Australia. Pine Gap is operated jointly by Australia and the United States. The CIA and the NSA represent most of the government personnel from the USA. Pine Gap contains a wide range of communication devices, such as high-frequency or HF radio, underground cable, Telstra telephone telex, and two satellite communication terminals. On average, there are 1,200 staff working at the site, almost exclusively underground. Pine Gap is instrumental in tracking missiles with satellite imagery or tracking the movement of troops. There are about 18 satellite control antennas, making it one of the largest satellite control stations in the world for satellites parked in fixed orbits above the equator. The most recent satellites installed are 100 meters in diameter. They intercept signals in the VHF, UHF, and millimeter wave frequency bands. Within that frequency, there are four categories of signals. The staff have to wear color-coded ID to match the color ribbons running along the walls. U.S. Military Airlift Command Crafts and personnel carry thousands of tapes home for further study and in return send parts and supplies twice weekly. There are direct links from Pine Gap to the U.S. bases in the Philippines, Guam, Krugerdorp, South Africa, and the Amnusten Scott base at the South Pole. For those who need instant transportation, there is a teleportation jump room at Pine Gap that connects to the S-4 base near Area 51 in the Nevada desert. Pine Gap now functions as a major control center for the New World Order dictatorship. 
Pine Gap is equipped with whole levels of computer terminals tied into the major computer mainframes of the world, which contain the intimate details of most of the inhabitants of industrialized nations. The computer room at Pine Gap is one of the largest in the world, and the operators use headsets to communicate. Within the central operations building at Pine Gap, people are keeping the satellite and its antennas focused on the signals they are intercepting. Other staff members process the enormous volume of intercepted signals. Echelon is a highly secretive worldwide signals intelligence and analysis network run by the USA UK intelligence community. Echelon can capture radio and satellite communications, telephone calls, faxes, and emails nearly anywhere in the world. And this includes the automated computer analysis and sorting of intercepts. Echelon is estimated to intercept up to 3 billion communications every day. Along with Pine Gap, some of the known or suspected ground stations belonging to or participating in the Echelon network include the following locations and which countries operates the facility. Fort Meade, Maryland in the USA, headquarters of the NSA. Geraldtown, Western Australia in Australia. Menwith Hill, Yorkshire, UK. Minaswa Air Base in Japan. Morwenstro, Cornwall, UK. Sabana Seca, Puerto Rico, USA. Shoal Bay, Northern Territory, Australia. Sugar Grove, West Virginia, USA. Yakima, Washington, USA. Waihopai, New Zealand. And West Cape, Australia. In Exmouth Gulf, Australia and the U.S. The Pine, Gri the Pine Gap Underground Base, the Dulce, New Mexico facility, and the neo-Nazi New Berlin Antarctic base are all connected to an alliance of regressive alien forces. The Dracos of Alpha Draconis, the Greys of Rigel Orion, and Aryan Ashtar forces of Cirrus B lead those unholy six of the Orion Empire on Earth. They also have a base foothold within the massive Kamagol II facility under Giza, Egypt. The Orions infiltrated the Gnostic Serpent Cult, later to spawn the Grand Orient Lodge of Egyptian Freemasonry, the Gnostic Thule Society, the Bavarian Illuminati, and the Third Reich, all of which serves their goals. Dulce, New Mexico. Dulce, New Mexico is a sleepy little town of less than 4,000 inhabitants, mostly members of the Hickoria Apache Nation. Many ranchers in the nearby communities have reported hundreds of mysterious cattle mutilations and frequent sightings of military helicopters in the last few decades. It was during the mid-1980s that wild stories of an underground alien base surfaced and continue to this day, so much so that the entire town of Dulce has become almost synonymous with an alleged underground alien biolab. Because Dulce is located only 160 kilometers northwest of Los Alamos National Laboratory, it provides additional fuel for conspiracy buffs. After all, Los Alamos is the leading edge research facility on human genome 
and DNA research in the USA. The military industrial extraterrestrial complex, that's MIEC at Dulce, is a joint government alien biogenetic laboratory designed to carry out bizarre experiments on humans and animals. The largest section of this unseen underground base is located deep below the tangled brush of the Archuleta Mesa. Participants include the NSA, gray aliens, those Draco-controlled ETs, and a curious Bavarian influence. This multi-level faculty is reported to have a central hub which is controlled by base security. The security level rises as one descends to lower levels. Humans who have worked there report at least seven sub-levels at a depth of four kilometers, but some report Dulce going as deep as 13 levels. Level one is general maintenance. Level two houses garage facilities for trains, shuttles, tunnel boring machines, and disc maintenance. Level three is known as the weighing level, since those entering are stripped naked, weighed, and all information stored in the computer system and on ID cards checked. Any change over 1.5 kilograms requires a physical exam and x-ray. Level four is for human paranormal research, such as hypnosis, mind control, mental telepathy, remote viewing, and astral traveling. Level five is for alien housing. It is a circular room containing an electromagnetic generator nearly 60 meters in diameter. Security is extreme with 24-7 armed guards, weight-sensitive areas and handprint and eyeprint stations. Housed here is a device that powers the transfer of atoms. Level six is known as Nightmare Hall. It holds the genetic labs in which experiments vastly alter original animal forms. In cages and vats hold multi-armed and multi-legged humans or humanoid bat-like creatures up to seven feet tall. Level seven contains humans in cages, usually drugged or dazed, sometimes crying out for help. Allegedly there are rows and rows of humans, many children, and human animal hybrid remains in cold storage, as well as embryos of humanoids in various stages of development. The main whistleblower of the Dulce underground base was Phil Schneider, a geologist and engineer who worked on black operations projects. Shortly after making several public appearances discussing Dulce operations, Mr. Schneider was found brutally tortured and killed in his home. No money or other valuables were taken after the murder, later deemed a suicide, but all of his lecture materials on Dulce and his collection of alien medals were removed. It would appear that all the government's dark secrets, none are as sensitive or disturbing as the Dulce underground base. In regard to the cattle and human mutilations, most of the organic material is taken below ground through the cave openings north of the Archuleta Plateau. The evidence indicates that these surgeries are performed in most cases while the animal or human victims are still alive. The various parts of the body are taken to various underground laboratories, the main one of which is part of the Dulce complex. This jointly occupied CIA alien facility 
has been described as enormous with huge tiled walls that just go on forever. In 1978, an agreement was reached between the Ute Indians in Colorado and the federal government. This agreement consisted of the Ute Nation receiving all the territory now occupied along the New Mexico-Colorado border with the explicit agreement that they would strictly enforce a no trespassing regulation along the border of their territory. Thus, it is not possible to cross the Ute Reservation without special permission from the tribal headquarters. But without permission, trespassers are liable to a fine, jail, or expulsion. The Colorado border is only a few kilometers away from and to the north of the Archuleta Plateau. The opening to the Dulce Base are in caves in a steep walled canyon to the north of the Archuleta Mesa. There is a road leading to the Archuleta area through the reservation, but the Indian Forest Service patrols it for trespassers. Recently, a research team has gone up to the Archuleta Mesa to take soundings from under the ground. Preliminary and tentative computer analysis of these soundings indicates deep cavities within the mesa. There are also above ground ventilation shafts for the base on the top of Mount Archuleta. The ducts are rectangular, horizontal, and about 10 meters wide. One researcher, cited by John Lear, did some very sophisticated frequency analysis of the area and said, quote, whatever is under there puts out the energy of a city the size of New York, end quote. Presumably, one huge ventilation shaft can be viewed on Google Earth, seen by traversing exactly 12.8 kilometers northeast from the Dulce Elementary School. Inside the underground base is an elevator that leads to level one of the massive facility directly beneath the Dulce area, which is also known as Ultra or Section D. Pro Force security guards this level, whereas deeper and more secure levels under the Archuleta Mesa to the north contain automatic devices designed to kill intruders. Dulce is by far the most massive and most strategic of all the underground hubs of the joint military-industrial alien collaboration in North America. From Dulce, tube tunnels radiate to all parts of the continent and beyond. The only sign in English at the tube tunnel shuttle station hallway reads, To Los Alamos. The deeper faculties under Los Alamos reportedly descend to great depths and intersect with alien sectors, which constitute the largest concentration of gray alien activity in North America, with Dulce running a close second. To minimize cattle mutilations, the U.S. government has reportedly been transporting daily shipments of cattle to rendezvous points in the mountains southeast of Los Alamos, where some have reported sizable UFO activity on these occasions. There appears to be a vast network of tube shuttle connections under the U.S., which extends into a global system of tunnels and sub-cities. Connections go from Dulce to a base at Page, Arizona, then on to the underground facility below Area 51 in Nevada. Tube shuttles go to and from Dulce to facilities below Taos and Los Alamos, New Mexico, and to the NORAD base at Colorado Springs, Colorado, as well as a dozen other smaller facilities throughout the Southwest. NORAD. 
both commercial and Air Force pilot UFO sightings now amount to over 10,000 reports. All U.S. Air Force pilots must report in a particular manner describing the craft and weather conditions, and then the form must be forwarded to the NORAD base. NORAD is the acronym for the North American Air Defense Command, built deep within the solid granite of Cheyenne Mountain in central Colorado. Commercial pilots who report UFO sightings but ignore warnings not to go public and instead to decide to do interviews are routinely fired from their jobs. The original requirement for an operations center in Colorado's Cheyenne Mountain was to provide command and control in support of the air defense mission against the Soviet bomber threat. But several events and emerging technology drove this mission to evolve beyond those initial needs. Faced with the threat of ballistic missile attack and with the advent of larger computer processing capabilities, NORAD developed a series of warning and assessment systems. The operations center itself lies along one side of a main tunnel, which is a kilometer long through the solid granite heart of the mountain. The center was designed to withstand up to a 30 megaton nuclear blast within two kilometers. Fast walker is a code word created by NORAD to classify UFOs which approach our Earth from outer space and then enter our atmosphere. Deep within the subterranean facility inside and below Cheyenne Mountain, the Air Force NORAD facility, deep within the subterranean facility inside and below Cheyenne Mountain, the Air Force NORAD facility tracks roughly on average of 500 fast walker incidents per year. Slow walkers refer to the slow moving satellites. Fast walkers move at an incredible speed, up to 16,000 kilometers per hour, often making a precise 90 degree turn, then disappearing. Area 51. Nellis Air Force Base, with its associated restricted ranges, occupies almost 8,000 square kilometers of the southern and central Nevada desert. Nellis is a vast military reservation, home of Top Gun flight training and exotic and leading-edge R&D projects. Right in the center of the Nellis Base, is a place called Area 51. It is the USA's most secretive above and below ground military complex. There are 19,000 known people working there on any given day. And they are transported in and out by aircraft every day, mostly from Las Vegas. I should say that was 1,900 known people. One group of workers arrives in the morning and are returned around five o'clock in the evening. They have nothing to do with the alien flying discs. Another group of employees who work on the discs arrive later in the afternoon and go home around midnight. The underground experimental disc faculty is called S4 inside Papoose Lake inside Papoose Mountain. The S-4 base is located in the southwest corner of Area 51. At S-4, several human whistleblowers reported that they worked with an extraterrestrial being named J-Rod and described this gray as a telepathic translator. The entity was once said to have drawn a symbol that looked like our letter J, followed by a straight line that looked like a rod, and the name stuck. 
other grays assisted humans were also called J Rod. The first wave of Area 51 notoriety came in 1989 when a man named Bob Lazar appeared in a broadcast on Las Vegas television station KLAS, claiming to be a physicist working on backward engineered propulsion systems of various saucer-shaped aircraft. He reported that these new systems were based on recovered alien technology. The crafts he worked on were kept in secret complex called S4 at Lake, a dry lake bed only a few miles south of Groom Lake. Subsequent interviews with Lazar on KLAS transformed the region outside of Area 51 into a top destination for UFO watchers. The second wave of notoriety came when two mountain peaks, Freedom Ridge and White Sides Mountain, located less than 21 kilometers away from Area 51, became prime viewing platforms for night aerial activity. The nearby mountains became so popular that the Air Force acquired the land from the Federal Bureau of Land Management, that's BLM, and closed access in April 1995 for the public safety. Additional Area 51 infamy involved the known testing of the Star Wars defense program, the stealth cruise missile, and hypersonic spy airplanes that can reach speeds up to Mach 7. It was also reported to be the site of the top training of pilots from around the world. There have been eyewitness reports of disc-shaped crafts hovering over nearby mountains, rumors of at least 15 underground levels, and the remains of alien bodies and extraterrestrial aircraft being stored at S-4. The base does not appear on any public U.S. government maps. According to modern Federal Aviation Administration pilots' charts and U.S. Geological Survey topographic maps, this airbase simply does not exist. Area 51 is as much of an enigma today as it ever was. The military still keeps the area cloaked in tight secrecy and seeks to acquire even more BLM land to keep the curious watchers even farther away. Although Area 51 is in Nellis Air Space, Edwards Air Force Base in California controls the base itself. The Nellis Bombing and Gunnery Range is the largest restricted airspace in the world and the largest restricted ground area in the United States. The entire base is 7,546 square kilometers, approximately the same size as the state of Connecticut. Although enormous in size, the Nellis airspace is greater whole surrounding area 51. Even the name Area 51, a title given by the Atomic Energy Commission, remains ambiguous. The designation Area 51 can be found on old government maps, but the base has other nicknames too. Pioneers named the dry lake bed Groom Lake and blazed the first dirt roads into the region long before the land was acquired by the Air Force. Another popular nickname is Dreamland, referring to the name of the restricted airspace over Area 51. Military contractors call Area 51 the Ranch or Paradise Ranch. The CIA director of 1955 was from Watertown, New York, and CIA staffers reportedly refer to Area 51 as the Watertown Strip. Other nicknames include the Pig Farm and the Box. Rumors continue to circulate as to whether the Air Force has moved 
its most sensitive operations out of Area 51 or if the top secret testing continues to this day. S4 and S2 at Papoose. The wider complex at Groom Lake, one of the areas of Nellis Air Force Base, was closed for a period of about a year, sometime between about 1972 and 1974, and a huge underground facility was constructed for and with the help of certain extraterrestrial biological entities, EDEs. The bargain for technology was set in place but could only be operated by the EBEs themselves. Needless to say, the advanced technology could not be used against the EBEs, even if needed. There were designated areas built for their exclusive usage and there were designated facilities for our use. The S4 facility inside the Papoose mountain range near Groom Lake is said to have up to 30 levels, some designated for flying craft storage, back engineered research laboratories, biological operations and applications to modern human technologies. Several levels are used for maintaining a variety of extraterrestrial biological entities in special environmental spheres designated to provide a different non-Earth atmosphere for the EBEs to be kept as captive status. The Papoose Mountain S4 facility at Area 51 has a special faculty called YY2 to house greys who cooperate as technological advisors and it stimulates a compatible environment workplace for both humans and EBEs. The housed visitors live within the bubble, officially known as the clean sphere located between levels two and three of the eight level S2 facility at Area 51. The underground base is located at the south end of the S2 facility marked visitor containment. There are 12 to 15 compartments within the bubble housing the aquacolloid and J-rod gray species in pressurized living compartments specially suited for each EBE. These entities are not allowed to leave on their own volition. There are also live aliens under human control at Los Alamos in the compartment also called YY2. The Underground Wars a series of wars supposedly took place at several underground bases between humans and the greys, although it was actually more of a massacre. The first outbreak of violence began on May 1st, 1975, during a demonstration of an antimatter reactor within an underground Area 51 chamber. Two Zeta reticulin greys were demonstrating a 100% power producing annihilation reaction in a relatively small antimatter reactor to two deep cover scientists and attendant security staff using a super heavy element bombarded with protons. One RET4, a slang term for a resident of the fourth planet of the Zeta-2 reticuli system, operating the demonstration, ordered the human security officers to remove the bullets from their weapons. One security officer questioned this order, and just for having the audacity to question, one of the greys killed the man. To the attending humans, this murder exposed the fact that they were not allied to the American government at all, but actually an occupational invasion force that had to maintain absolute discipline among its conquered subjects. The Greys sensed the fear of the humans and commenced to 
slaughter the two scientists and 41 military personnel within the tunnels below Area 51, although one human survived. This slaughter occurred apparently only because the colonel in charge of security questioned the Gray's orders. Only one Gray died in that initial altercation. This was simply the initial incident in the Groom Wars, and since then other incidents have occurred, resulting in the deaths or disappearances of aliens and human scientists, workers, and military personnel. All the humans who died had perished by head wounds and resultant damage of brain matter. Since no weapons was seen by the one surviving witness, it appears that the greys are able to use their minds as weapons, in essence, using their brains as biochemical circuit boards through which to channel electromagnetic energy via specific neural patterns or pathways. This may explain why the greys have the ability to walk or phase through solid matter, read minds, send mental messages, and are able to lift and float themselves as well as abductees without observable instrumentation. Another battle occurred below Dulce, New Mexico, four years later in 1979, after several scientists had discovered the horrible truth that thousands of human abductees were located there in cold storage or imprisoned in cage like enclosures in the deeper alien sectors under Dulce. They were themselves captured by the aliens following the discovery. A special armed forces unit was called in to try and free a number of our people trapped in the facility who had become aware of what was really going on. According to one source, 66 of the soldiers were killed, only two escaped, and one of whom was Phil Schneider. Our scientists were not freed. These were some of the best American scientific minds, and they have never been heard from again. The result of the Groom Wars was an end to certain exchanges between the government and the Greys. MJ-12 has never been able to fully debrief or contain a human-looking Nordic-type alien. That is, not until the Nordics officially began working with segments of MJ-12 at Area 51, starting sometime during the 1980s. Previously, they had never had an actual ET Nordic in captivity long enough to do so. It seems these beings simply said goodbye and disappeared. This may be because the Nordic type ETs also have the natural ability to phase in and phase out of the third dimension, or similarly, they may have been beamed out by their people. ET bases in the USA. Different races of ETs have been afforded their own bases within the massive Nellis complex. These are the ETs that are covertly involved with global governments and the military in an outgoing basis. The tall greys have two known bases. One is at the lower levels at Dulce, New Mexico, and the other is a location known as Area 55 at Nellis. Another ET race called the Tall Whites, or Nordics, who look remarkably similar to Earth humans, also have a base in the northern end of Indian Springs Valley, located in the southern area of the sprawling Nellis Air Force Base. Part of the enormous Nellis Air Force Base larger than some of the smallest U.S. states, is devoted to underground nuclear testing. Glenn T. Seaborg oversaw the Atomic Energy Commission, that is the AEC, from 1961 until 1971, 
when much of the secret nuclear testing was going on, including reports of at least one nuclear space rocket meltdown. The AEC was succeeded by the Department of Energy. Some of the deepest underground levels below Area 51, as well as Dulce, may now belong to forces not loyal to the U.S. government or the human race. Escapees report that certain areas have been taken over by the reptoid ETs who will kill on sight any humans they deem a threat. Any humans down at these levels reportedly are under complete mental control by these malevolent ETs. It is horrifying to think that some of these scientists we presume are working for us are actually controlled by the aliens. These are the reptoid aliens who abduct people to steal eggs and sperm to create hybrids to infiltrate and influence our society for their own ends. Humans are captured mostly for their reproductive capabilities. The primary reason the gray species of non-humans need blood and tissue from animals is to absorb it, and they do so by literally painting their skin with a mix of these organic fluids. The hemoglobin used in this formula is used for nutrition. Hybrids made underground. It must first be pointed out that genetic technology itself is amoral. It is neither good nor bad. It is a tool like a hammer that can either build a shelter or become a weapon. What is done with genome technology depends on who is using it, and this is especially clear with genetic manipulation. The various reptoid species, specifically the greys, can clone almost any living tissue into a creature via a method called rapid cycle cloning. J-Rod was a creature created by the greys. Such a creature is intelligent, contains a brilliant mind, and can adapt quickly to our environment. Another kind of creature called the Arquilid is primitive by comparison, a form of slave. It can be controlled, given orders, and is safe, or at least was initially thought to be safe. The Arquiloid responds to a brain chip and can be functionally controlled by a little black box. The Aqualoid is an example of a cloned biological entity, CBE. Because human and reptilian beings are genetically so different in their physical makeup, a natural hybrid between the two is impossible. However, an unnatural genetic alteration, in essence, the splicing of human and reptilian genes has been attempted. Even if this were accomplished, the offspring would not be an actual hybrid, which is half human and half reptilian, but would fall to one side or the other. Since reptilians possess no soul matrix, as do us humans, but instead operate on a collective consciousness level, the hybrids would be human or reptilian, depending on whether they were born with, with or without a soul energy matrix. In most cases, one might tell the difference between a hybrid human or hybrid reptilian if the entity had round pupils as opposed to black, opaque, or vertical slit pupil eyes, or five-digit fingers as opposed to three or four, or external genitalia as opposed to none. Some of the hybrids without souls are fed human soul energy in an attempt to graft an already existing human soul matrix into the hybrid. Then, then there are the synthetics of several different types and varieties, some of which are very human-like and which may be used as infiltrators, such as the men in black. Others apparently look more like gray entities, yet are not reptilian. 
Instead, they are a type of molded entity form containing a sponge-like substance which permeates their interior. Although reptilian and humans apparently utify, utilize artificial intelligence devices or organisms, the draconians, as well as some controlled humans, have apparently developed biosynthetic or mechanical entities. This is especially true with the biosynthetic cybernetic creatures, which the reptilians have created using cybernetics and biological organs stolen from animal and human mutilation victims. Interestingly, one of the biggest difficulties the reptilians faced in making these hybrids was not the technological or biological challenges, but seemingly out of their control, having an earthbound spirit attached to the creature when it was born. Tunnels connect a network of DUMS. DUMS is the acronym for Deep Underground Military Bases and Structures. The tunnels connecting each base are similar to our own interstate highway system, except they're underground. The underground highway uses trucks, cars, and buses, all powered by clean electric motors. In any case, they wouldn't want gasoline fumes polluting the tunnels. The style of transport for freight and passengers is linked together in a worldwide network called the Subglobal System. It has checkpoints at each country entry. There are shuttle tubes that shoot the trains at incredible speeds using a maglev and vacuum method. These magneto-levitation trains can travel in excess of the speed of sound at Mach 2 supersonic speeds. Massive laser boring machines can literally melt rock at the rate of up to 10 kilometers per day to form the tunnels, and the work continues to this day. Skeptics have scoffed at claims that very long tunnels stretch from one military operation area to another. Yet, engineers have planned for tunnels to span the nation for decades. Surprisingly, skeptics are somewhat deficient in their imagination when it comes to what has already been accomplished. These same skeptics also do not believe in alien contact either, so it is even more difficult for them to accept the idea that aliens have inhabited the Earth for a long time or to believe that they must live underground and out of sight to hide their existence at all costs, or to believe that they are manipulating key people in power to do their bidding. However, there are increasing numbers of abductees who have reportedly been taken to underground bases. Some of these abductees have described seeing things that really do exist in government-run underground facilities. The truth is out there, or in this case, under there. <laughs>